Okay, so let's get started. And we'll give you guys time at the end uh, when you're doing lab to finish the quiz as well. Okay, so mini projects number one have, has been graded already. And it's online, you can go and check uh, how you did as well as kind of how the class distribution was. If you had any questions about the way it was graded, please just email us. Um, mini project number two will be out soon. Hopefully we can put it out tonight. And don't worry, I know you guys have midterms and things. Um, it'll actually be due in about two weeks, two and a half weeks. So we'll figure out the deadline, but we'll try to give you guys enough time to, 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 to take care of it. Uh, mini project two is going to be about Photoshop, so you get a little bit of to get a little bit of a chance to put together kind of a web 2.0-ish layout in uh, Photoshop and then just build it in HTML and CSS. So basically the things that we've been talking about so far. Uh, for today, you should have downloaded the Photoshop trial from Adobe.com. It's, it's like a 30-day trial, and that should last you for uh, just the class. Unfortunately, the computers here don't have Photoshop installed. Uh, I think just the license is really expensive, and uh, they never got a chance to buy those, or no one donated the license. So if you guys want to donate, you guys are welcome to donate. We'd appreciate it. Um, but it is, I think it's like a couple hundred dollars per license, so. And if you guys need any help in the course, you know, feel free to email us. We can set up office hours outside of class. There's additional information on our previous semester's website. And there are webcasts from our current uh, semester on YouTube as well that are being uploaded. So today we're just going to uh, review positioning in one slide just really quickly. And then we're going to talk about uh, the later half of turning in your mock, turning your mock-up into HTML and CSS. So we're going to look at actually attaching background images. Um, we're going to look at some more CSS attributes like background repeat. And then we'll talk about just image types and Photoshop itself. And then there'll be a lab at the end of class. So just a positioning review. We learned from last lecture that there are four types of uh, sorry, four, four types of CSS positioning. There is static, relative, absolute, and fixed. Can someone just go down the list and kind of give us a brief summary of uh, what these four values do for us? Does anyone know? Or what about the first one, static? It's on it's on the slide. <laughs> yeah, static is default, right? So it's it's basically how things are already displayed. If you have if you have um, like your div or whatever element uh, set to display relative, or sorry, the position relative, absolute, or fixed, you can override it back to normal static. But what about relative? How does relative work? How does that affect our CSS? There's someone at the door. You. So if we give it offsets when it's position relative, what happens? Or how does that bother you? Relative to like the entire web page. Yeah, kind of, yeah. So relative to where it was originally. So if you give it 10 pixels, then it'll move 10 pixels down from where it was originally. What about absolute? You guys remember? It's in the quiz. Well, it just goes from the top left corner, or from the corner of the original tip that it's in. Right, right. So it's going to be, it's going to move from the top left corner of, um, or top right, depends on how you do the offset, or bottom right. Just, it's going to be relative to its container element. Or um, if there's no container element that has its position set, it's going to be relative to the browser window. And then what about fixed? The browser document, the document, the HTML document, sorry. What about fixed? This is the Facebook example, right? Yeah. So this is where, um, like on Facebook, you have that chat bar. And that chat bar stays in the bottom right-hand side of your screen, no matter where you scroll. That's what fixed allows you to do. And um, an important note is that when you have something position absolute or fixed, it's going to remove that element from the document flow. Can someone explain what that means? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, yes, it wasn't there. Right, so the objects that are also in your HTML document are just going to behave as if this HTML element isn't there. So they're going to just uh, configure themselves how, how they would be original. Suppose you have a large div and you have two small divs inside of that, and you want the second div to be in the, bottom, in the top right hand corner. How would you set that up? Um, you would you would apply a position if I if I'm getting it right. You would just apply a position relative or absolute to so the you container. You can't do absolute because you don't know the sizes of the two divs, the two small divs, and you want the large one to scale. So you, you need them to be in the, in the document flow. Well, can you drop? Yeah, we will be able to talk about. Oh, you can come. If you want to yeah. talk? All right. Sorry, you just <laughs> it's hard to explain. Yeah. So we have a large div and we have two text 
text fields so that the views aren't from a certain text and they scale accordingly. They want the large div to scale so that if this one's really long, then oh, I see. it's going to be like that. Um, but we want the second div to be right over here, so we have to use relative position, right? Yeah, so you're saying that you want the container div to scale too. Yeah. yeah. So this, this one's a little bit technical. Um, what happens is like if you do, if you apply position fix or absolute to an element, it's going to move from the document flow. So if you have a container, like we saw when we set height and width, and um, you change the contents of that, the container div normally is going to resize the common data, right? If it's width it or height, width and height are set to auto. Do you guys remember that kind of? Where you have like a, you have a container div, and if the children inside of it changes sizes, then the container div also expands to accommodate that. Okay, so if you move from the document flow though, that behavior that you had there isn't going to happen because the, the child is now removed from the document flow. And so if that child document has a height that's larger than its container, then the container isn't going to resize the fit that because it, it, it's not interacting with that in any way. So the way that you would do something like this um, is you kind of have to make a choice like if this text box is going to be the longer one or if this text box is going to be the longer one. And if it's this one, you could give it a margin leading relative, then you can position this one absolute. Right, so it's a little bit of a design choice there. This is a little bit like technical, and um, it's like a one of just just one of those like funny layout problems that you might have. Um, I can talk to you about it more later. Okay. But yeah, you would have to have it relative. Yeah, that's hard. You can. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's start talking about uh, Photoshop mockup to HTML and CSS. So, so far we've seen kind of solid color things, right? And it's not very pretty or attractive, um, but it gives us a general idea of how to set up our HTML elements into the layout configuration that we want. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to be able to create a site like this. So all we have to do, or not all we have to do, but the missing link between having a layout like this and this are just really graphics, right, images. So we're gonna learn a new CSS property today called uh, CSS background image, and that's going to allow us to associate uh, images with our divs so that they actually look like something instead of just, you know, neon colored blocks. All right. <clears throat> so the property is just this. It's background image, and you pass it uh, the path to your image that you want to apply to that element. And one important note is you can only apply one background image per, um, per HTML element. And then later on in this uh, lecture, we're going to learn about background position and background repeat, which are kind of secondary uh, properties to this, which will allow you to do some pretty neat things with background images as well. So here's just a quick example. Um, we have a website here, and we have a div in the middle. And right now, this div has no background image. So all we're going to do is just apply a background image really quickly. And there you go, right? So all we're doing really is we're reskinning our HTML elements and just adding graphics on top of them. But um, before this, before applying these background views, our HTML should have already basically been set. So at this point, we shouldn't have to really modify our HTML documents too much. What we might do at this point um, is we might create additional HTML elements to hold more images, but all the content that should be part of our HTML documents um, should, already be, should already be there. Are there any questions about how kind of background images work? Do you guys see kind of what we're doing here? We're just, we're just going. So is the text that like uses a font where it's like not is there. on someone's computer that you just you take that HTML? And if it's not, then you make it to like Photoshop or sure. Yeah, so he asked a question where um, you go to some websites, right? Some websites have cool font and that font's non-standard font, so it's not font uh, it's not a font that's a, that's included in most like operating systems like Windows, Apple. If you're gonna use font like that, you have to use an image because um, you can't guarantee that your clients browsing it are going to be able to are going to have that font too. You can specify in the CSS. You can actually say you know use you know my special font. I think it's font face that attribute or font style. I, don't know, I think I think it's font face. But if you do that, you run the risk of them not actually having a font. So you, you can you can set like another font that they might that they, that they might fall back to. But uh, generally, it's it's good to use system fonts for most of your content, and then only use kind of specialized fonts for headings or logos. Okay, so here's just the general process. 
uh, going from a Photoshop mock-up to a finished product, which is your you know kind of web people and a website. So we've already we've already taken care of one through three. You go from your Photoshop mock-up, you identify the divs like in lab, and then you just code out the divs in the CSS into the configuration that you need for the CSS. And in number four and five, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're basically going to actually slice up our Photoshop mock-up so we can apply images from our mock-up to our HTML elements. So why use images at all? Um, CSS, we learn, basically handles all our styling, right? So why can't we just you know, do everything in CSS? Why do we need images? Well, the truth is, um, in CSS2, CSS2 really only handles rectangular shaped objects and objects with a single color. So if you notice, you know, all the HTML elements that we've been using, divs, uh, links, spans, if you apply a background image to them, they're all rectangular. And there's just no way to specify something that has rounded edges, an oval, or a circle. Um, with CSS, you can apply just a single color, and you can't do anything with gradients. Um, with CSS3, which is kind of the new standard, like HTML5, it's what's coming out now, you can do all the things that you can do in, in uh, that you can do in CSS2, which is gradients. So gradients are just kind of a range of colors. Um, rounded corners, reflections, rotation. It's all handled in CSS3. But can anyone guess why we can't use CSS3 right now? And this is kind of why we can't use, um, or this is like a browser thing. Microsoft. Microsoft, right? <laughs> Good. So we're not trying to teach you to hate Internet Explorer in any way, but we don't like it. Um, here's a chart, right? So green, 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 red, 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 red. So the reason why you can't use, um, well, you could, but the reason why you still, we still resort to background images a lot is because the majority of the people browsing the Internet, which is using Internet Explorer, don't have um, a CSS3 compatible browser. So it's kind of a shame, and um, I mean, in probably in a couple of years, I'll be taken care of. So you'll start seeing uh, rounding corners, reflection, gradients, and rotation in your HTML uh, documents without the, the use of background images. Okay. So we've also seen the image tag for HTML images. And um, now we're using background images. So why don't we just you know choose one? Why do we need both? Or um, in this case, when do we use you know the HTML element and when do we use the CSS background image property? So the general rule is that when you use the image tag, you're saying that this image is part of your page's content. So it's relevant to you know what this page is about. So if it's if it's kind of like a portfolio page, it's about me, you have a photo of yourself, then it's relevant to the page, because right? that's you. If you're using background images, what you're saying is this image isn't, isn't important to the content. It's just uh, display. It's just there for display to help present your content, right? So if you have like a menu bar, for instance, and that menu bar is using a, a back, uh, is using an image, then you don't really care that the image is there, right? The image is there just to just to help present the fact that you have you know menu buttons, um, menu buttons there. It's not actually part of your layout content, so you use the background image that. So here's just some examples of when you would use the background image. So of course you'd use it for background images, uh, menu bars and gradients that we've talked about. Um, and in, th in this case, this is kind of gray area, right? This is, it could kind of be the page's content, but it's also a graphic that's kind of reused. And in this case, the main focus of this particular page is uh, what's inside of these frames. So these, these images inside the frames are actually image elements. And this box around it is, is actually just the background. So it's just a div that has, uh, has that applied. And the opposite of that is just the image use tag. So things like logos, um, photos that are part of your article, your profile pictures, your thumbnails, those are all going to be uh, images. And if you have targeted ads, like I get from Facebook that tell me that they use girlfriend, um, they're going to use images as well, right? Because that's part of the ad, right? So are there any are there any quick questions?